So life can feel pretty crazy sometimes, don't you think? It's constantly moving and bringing us to experiences to learn and grow from. We can often feel powerless or stuck in a spin cycle that feels like the same as yesterday. No matter what is happening around us, the constant in all of this is ourselves. Here as a human with a soul and here to grow, experience joy and fun. Listen to today's episode as I go solo and talk about setting intentions and taking on new perspectives to assist you on the journey. I'll see you in the episode. Are you obsessed with the mystic? Are you looking for sisterhood? Are you ready to explore your inner magic? You've arrived, sister. Welcome home. I'm Maureen Spielman, and I started this show to highlight the intuitives, healers, and other courageous women I have met along my journey. Through amazing interviews, we go deep into the mystics and uncover the ways in which you can apply the knowledge and wisdom in your own life. We are all in this together. Sharing healing and joy in community is both my passion and my purpose. Here's today's conversation. Welcome back to Mystical Sisterhood. This is your host, Maureen Spielman. And midsummer, I'm coming to you with a solo episode. I tossed around several ideas and came up with one around setting intentions and taking on new perspectives. As I record this episode, I have created 80 episodes for Mystical Sisterhood. And it's been such an honor and a blessing because I've taken in I would say over 70 interviews, probably around 70, and taken in 70 perspectives and then exponential, right? Because if you think of each episode and what was offered, it's incredible. So it fortifies what I am learning in my own life personally, what I've studied through my coaching, and what I'm here to talk to you about today. So I have found that these ideas of setting clear intentions in my life having true curiosity about taking on new perspectives, that these two things alone allow me to experience my life more deeply and more sweetly. And I can see not only with my physical eyes that by taking on these new sort of kind of tools or skills or behaviors, that newness and new possibilities and potential open in front of me all the time. And in doing that, I believe that that's how the energy changes within me, but around me too. And it allows me to see the magic and the miracles that are there as well. So let's talk about intentions. Let's talk about perspectives. Let's talk about being curious. And let's talk about doing that inner work in order to change within and let go of what no longer serves us and then see what's happening in front of us. I would say, just a few beginning thoughts, that I'm often being asked to overturn what I once thought, or at the very least, look more deeply at the ways in which I was conditioned and what there is to let go of or move on from. I'm wondering if you're feeling the same. I've been hearing that it's a time of rapid expansion for those who are at the precipice of wanting to know how to be more in touch with themselves and re really live fully from an inner experience, I would say. So living from that inner experience and letting go of all the ways we used to live from outer validation or outer control or outer influence or pressure. So that's, you know, what I'm getting is that there's a time for this like rapid expansion going on for us. And that's why I kind of chose to choose a topic like today, because I think topics that talk about really embedding new practices within our being, within our like psyche or consciousness are here to assist us in what, what we want to move on to. Uh, maybe not unlike yourself, I realized that everything I once thought or was taught could be wrong and that any place I believed I had control in addition was simply an illusion because I know now that there's no physical roadmap that tells us what every step of our journey is going to be or an exact timeline for our lives. There is not an, an exact destination that I arrive at and somehow you know, I've won the prize. I see that life is a journey. So it's my journey, it's your journey, filled with lots and lots of twists and turns. And maybe what seems sometimes like going towards a dead end or definitely veering off a path, but it's all for a purpose. 
And on your soul's journey, it all has meaning. And that's fascinating to me. I don't know how you feel about that. So as well, before I get into intentions, I now realize that there are lessons I came to take on and learn in this lifetime. And I'm just going to say it. Some of them persist and are seemingly a constant for me. Yet, I know through the work of understanding myself more deeply and widely that new perspectives about myself and the outer world, the humans in my energy field, my quantum field, happenings in the field, they abound. So new perspectives abound. So even though the, the things in life can seem persistent, if we make that commitment to ourselves to be so interested in our own transformation, they are changing on the outside, whether we can see them in the moment or not. So I have found the beauty of creating intentions is that it allows us to move in the direction of what we want to experience in our lives. And I I think that intention setting, along with a willingness to take on new perspectives and see things with new eyes, those two things right there are incredibly impactful. The curiosity to be curious, to be willing. I'm so curious about the intentions that you have in your life right now. And I wanted to share a few of my own. For a long time, as I embarked on the work of, I believe, being invested in my own personal growth, I had the intention of showing up authentically in every relationship in my life. And that's still one of them that continues for me. And maybe it's my overarching one, I'm not sure. But my list grows all the time. And so when I sat down to write today the intentions that I currently hold for my life, and I, I'm going to offer these to you so you can think about, well, maybe those resonate with me. Maybe I have some overlap with Maureen. Maybe I'm completely different. I would say I would encourage you to make your list as well. It's a beautiful practice for your life. It's very self-honoring for your life. So the ones I came up with, the first one was, to learn to be in love, act as love, feel love, and experience love. Very overarching as you can feel. My second was one is kind of an adjunct to that. To turn away from fear and towards love in all that I do. So that's a little bit of A Course in Miracles that everything is either a call for love. What is it? Love or a call for love. And more and more, that becomes strong for me. The one number three I listed is just the one I explained to realize my authentic nature and bring it into everything I do and every relationship I have. And then my fourth one was to understand myself as a highly sensitive, spiritual, emotional, and physical being who seeks love and compassion above all else. Oh, I did have a fifth one here to transcend my mind and live from my heart space more often. So what I know is that the more intention I build into my life, the more grounded I become in my life. I invite you to do the same. So for you, an exercise that you can do is when you get a quiet moment today, and that might be right now, if you listen to this as sort of background on your Wednesday morning, <laughs> I can see that many, many people listen to it right when it comes out. But for you today, or whenever you get the time, take out a notebook or a journal and sit in silence for a few minutes. Ask yourself with the sacred support of the universe, what you want to set for your intentions. When you do this, when you honor yourself with a daily setting of intention or set them possibly within your interactions and conversations, your life intentions, your bigger ones may become more clear. The third one I named again, to realize my authentic nature and bring it into everything I do and every relationship I have has been mine for years. And those other ones are just filling in. So what would you intend for your day? What will you intend for today? And you can say there's ones that can be more, I feel like physically based. I, I intend to eat well and exercise and take these five things off my list. Or they can be more about the qualities you want to live in. I want to set an intention to see love in the people I meet today, to be love in my relationships. Or intending to give yourself compassion when you perceive yourself as tripping or falling or making a mistake or the ways in which we used to be hard on ourselves, but we're pledging to each other we're not going to do anymore. 
this came to me when I was writing this episode. I did not come here to not see myself. I did not come here to not know myself. You did not come here to not see yourself. You did not come here to not know yourself. We did not come here to not see one another. I came here to know myself fully and in wholeness. You came here to know yourself fully and in wholeness. We came here to know one another fully and in wholeness. I'm convinced that we came to do this work together. So that being said about intentions, I also want to just add some things about new perspectives I've taken as part of the journey, I think, of being invested in my own personal growth. And I'm curious what new perspectives you're taking on that might help you shape how you see your, the world, how you see your experience. So my first one was when I see myself, when I see myself as part of a whole of that something bigger, I'm able to witness my life's path with a different perspective. What if in your trust and seeing yourself as part of something bigger, you also used these invisible tools like intention or perspective to guide your way? What if in an invisible tool like intention was way more powerful than you were ever led to believe? I think that's something that's becoming really clear to me in the setting of mystical sisterhood. You know, I've said this before, but I often think, what is mystical? Why did you name it mystical? And I think it was because of this keen interest in the mystical or the unseen or the unknown. But that's what the mystical is. We can't see it, but we can feel it. And we know that it exists because when we open to new perspectives, I believe that the mystical unfolds in front of our eyes. That's another conversation. A new perspective is that we're all on a journey of turning inward more often. How do you feel about that? I think if you're a regular listener here, you're invested in that as well. I really believe life at this point in time, as I record this, it's in summer of 2024. It's asking us to examine our limiting beliefs and thoughts that may have taken over in our minds and let them go with just such honor and respect and thank them and replace them with something more gentle and kind. That is truly a new perspective. I believe many of us didn't grow up with that perspective. So I want to invite that new perspective in, that it's your life, that taking a compassionate and loving and a lens of unconditional regard for yourself is what is needed and being ushered in right now. My third perspective shift is sometimes what we are looking for is right in front of us, yet we tell an older story of what we see. So maybe I have a relationship that I've told the same story about over and over in my mind, so much so that I believed it. But what if a new story was wanting to take its place. Really, the new story is within ourselves and what we're willing to let go of. But we may be surprised with willingness what's allowed to change on the outside too. So I guess the new perspective here could be, I'm willing to work on change within and loosening the grip that my survival self or the, the exterior or Teflon shell that I had around myself I'm willing to look at that and let go of that and move into new ways of being and be open to new stories taking the place of ones that might feel outdated. And I just had to ask, add that your spirit guides and angels await your asking, steering you in small ways that we often forget to ask. So if we can implement into our lives that we're not here as solo artists, we're not here as just humans supporting one another or souls alongside. But what if a new perspective was, I have more assist assistance and support here for me than I ever knew. I think that's fascinating. And many of my guests talk about being guided, you being guided by spirit guides and angels. And so those are some new perspectives. I'm going to give you a few examples of how these perspectives have been implemented in my own life. So my first one was that I've created 80 plus episodes now of Mystical Sisterhood. And so my old perspective that 
in my old way of thinking that was could keep me rooted if I wasn't aware of it is that I don't have a plan here. What's happening? Should I stop creating? Is it growing? And to step back with a new perspective and a new invitation for me. And with those new eyes and that new perspective, I could say, I could own, this is spectacular beyond my wildest beliefs. Keep going. The universe keeps putting perfect guests in your path and thanking the universe each time, knowing that I am on the right path. An underlying lesson for myself there is, and this can be for you too, follow your path, use your intuition on what you desire to create, take the small steps alongside your new perspectives. Another one that is, I guess, related to my life is around the podcast is I have a story that's begging a new perspective. And the story is that for the podcast, I love, love, love to do the interviews. If you listen to my interviews, I hope that you can feel that energy that I love to have a new guest in front of me and ask them questions that will serve my audience. And they serve me too, of course. But when people say to me, Maureen, I want you to show up more. I think it would be great if you showed up more as a solo podcast guide. I have a story that says, but what would I say? What would, you know, what, what should I do? What do they want to hear about? Am I good enough? Am I worthy enough to do that? So my old thinking, and I'm trying to get to my truth on it, is I'm confused. I don't know my way. I'll never figure it out. And then I ask the new perspective to come in and ask the universe to show me the way. And I'll show you a neat way that the universe just guided me when I was open to it the other day, because this has been on my mind as I've been, it's been a while since I created uh, a solo episode. I was up in Michigan for the 4th of July and my niece and I were walking and I ran across one of the little free libraries. And those are those book boxes that people leave books in. And I don't always stop at them. And I stopped at this particular one and was looking at the books and lo and behold, there was a book in there. And I laughed because Heather Hansen, who's been a guest a couple of times, always talks about that area of Michigan. It's Southwest Michigan being quite mystical itself. So in the little free library was a book on well, it was called The Journey Home. And it was really about a physical representation of Archangel Michael along his life, his life's path. And I had to laugh because it was an incredibly spiritual book. I was just so grateful for it. And it wasn't lost on me that someone was looking out for me to put that book into my hands that evening. So my underlying, um, well, my new paradigm shift, you know, I was in the old one was when I wake to my truth, there are answers inside of me and all around me. And the underlying lesson for myself was trust and watch out for the signs here to support you. They are more plentiful and beautiful than you realize. And then lastly, I want to say, as I finish out the episode of intentions, perspectives, perspective shifts, examples, things that you can take home and do, I really believe when you shift and become willing to take on new perspectives and set these new intentions for your life, you undoubtedly shift and change within yourself. This alone transforms you and your life experience. You will begin to trust yourself more and trust the path you are on. Within your own being, you will take more responsibility for your choices and your actions. Life will no longer happen to you, but you see that each experience is here for your growth and transformation. Life excites you because you begin to, quote unquote, know and experience the truth. Above all, be patient with your process. Be patient with yourself. Somehow someone or some entity imparted on us that this was all to be in a hurry. I understand if you are in a painful place or your life depends on having the right answer right this minute. But even then, just know that you're being guided and that you are on the right path. And lastly, surround yourself with like-minded individuals seeking to transform yourself or themselves. Be curious about who or what shows up on your path. Take notes on how life is assisting you in your growth. And I'll simply leave it there for today, this sweet summer episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts and takeaways by emailing me at hello at maureenspielman.com. I always put the resources to get a hold of me in the notes, in the show notes. This episode encapsulates what I get excited about, the private coaching work I do with my clients. You can see it's it's an embedding of 
spiritual principles sort of like marrying married with our human experience like how can we deeply deeply form a compassionate bond with ourselves while putting new intention and perspectives in our energy field and inviting them into our lives and they're also the principles that i want to infuse into mystical sisterhood and the community that i am building and so if you want to be part of that community join in the show notes on the private Facebook page. And if you'd like to learn more about the events I run, there's usually a couple on the website, go to www.maureenspielman.com and visit the events page and see the guests and the principles of the work. I'm so excited for it. Thank you for listening today. I honor you, the listener beyond your beliefs. (laughs) It's why I do the work. It's what I get excited about. And I hope that this episode supported you in some way today. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of Mystical Sisterhood. If you love what you heard, please hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening. And if it's on Apple or Spotify, I would be so grateful for a five-star rating and review. And be sure to share with a friend if you're called to do so. To learn more about my one-on-one coaching programs and join the Mystical Sisterhood community, visit MaureenSpielman.com or MysticalSisterhood.com.